Hello fellow modelers, I promised you some times ago that I will build another airliner model, exactly Tupolev 154. So here it is, I chose a lovely kit made by Zvezda in 144 scale. The decals are nice and you have a choice of three markings, but the Russian flag has a quite odd matrix shading. The instruction manual is also straightforward, because the kit has only a few parts. Therefore, I purchased extra photo edge parts and new decals for good looking Czechoslovak airline marking. The plastic parts have a nice and soft pan lines, but the rest of the surface has a soft orange peel texture, so that it will be essential to smooth the surface with a sandpaper. The fuselage parts have holes for windows, I think masking will be problem this time. Anyway, let's assemble the kit. As usual, I cut out parts from sprue with side cutters, and this is my second eyeliner model, so let's make it more interesting. The wing looks a little bit dull and flat, thus I decided to make the leading edge slots and landing flaps opened. I do not have the resin parts for these modifications, so that I will need to preserve the plastic strips and be more careful. I use for cutting plastic an ordinary razor saw. If you do not have a hobby supply store nearby, you can find this tool at eBay, Amazon or so. The advantage of the razor saw is that the cut line is very thin. However, as you can see it is relatively easy to break the edge, so I can recommend to have more than one at home. I thought that the remove flaps would be relatively easy, but it wasn't. Especially on the bottom side of the wing has to pull off large covers for flaps mechanical system and also was necessary to preserve them. I use for gluing super thin glue. You simply let flu glue between plastic parts and press them. So here is the result. I need to relax from this modification, so I think fun will be assembling some details from this nice photo set. I start with engine fan, which is in the kit a little bit simplified. Anyway, I think this detail will not be very pronounced after assembling, so I'm making it just for good feel and because it looks cool. I use for gluing metal parts ordinary super glue. I told you, almost the same. All the details are nice, but I purchased this set primarily because of the reverse engine flaps, which has to pull off super cool. You must prepare that assembly of this detail is more complicated but glue only one plastic part on the model. And yes, it contains 16 small pieces, which you must bend to needed shapes. I use for bending metal or wooden rods of different diameters. Don't try to bend the shape only with the fingers or with the tweezers, because you can easily damage the thin metal parts. You can also solder brass parts with a tin, but if you use a good super glue, 
but it is a necessity. Okay, that was a fun and straightforward job. So now back to the flaps. I'm filling significant gaps or extant parts with a two component epoxy party. It has good strength after curing, similar to the resin. And you can smooth a party with the water when it's still fresh. It actually becomes solid after 15 or 20 minutes, so you have relatively enough time to process it. I cut out flaps from the kit, thus I must extend them with a party. You can use plastic board instead, but I prepared more party that I needed, so I use it also for this purpose. I know the result is not super smooth, but it will not be a problem to correct the shape with a sandpaper. I let the party dry out. And meanwhile, I think the windows need to be more uniform with the fuselage. At this moment, they are very raised above the surface. I use soft nail file for this purpose. The plastic is relatively soft, so you can easily make a deep scratches. The windows now have very smooth scratches, so I make them even more smaller with a super thin sandpaper. And this way I make the plastic more transparent and shinier. The result is still not satisfactory, thus I make the final work with a polishing compound. You actually do not need some super smooth polishing compound for plastic. And this is the result, I think a little bit better compared to the kit standard. Finally, I can glue fuselage together. I fix position of the plastic with electrical tape, which is elastic and you can tension it strongly. So again, flaps, which is my favorite part of the kit. Not. I am modifying the shape of the slats with a Proxon micro mod and very small mining cutter head. And also I am cutting out wing fans, which is from plastic very thick. And I will replace it from a new one. After a few hours later, our flaps finally on the wings again. Now I am unifying surface with a primer. It will reveal me a lot of imperfections that will be important to remove or restore. I let the fuselage dry out for one week because of the super thin glue. If you do not let it dry out properly, it could be a problem on the large flat surface because the bond will create a thin marks soon or later, even one month after assemble. If you do not want to wait, you can use super glue instead, but then it's a danger that the bond could crack. 
so every approach has some disadvantages. I filled a bond with a Tamiya white party, which I like because it nicely holds on plastic and you can easily remove excess party with a sandpaper. I only don't recommend it for significant gaps, because it will also create thin marks. I of course filled some pen lines with a party, so now I am rescribing them with a razor saw. I told you, a handy tool. I wasn't sure if it's a good idea to create rivet lines on the wings, but when I saw some photos in detail, I think it could be a shame not to try at least. I only needed for the small scale new riveting tool with a smaller tooth pitch. And I found that also exists a riveting tool with a double lines. It really makes life easier. I think it will be handy for some bombers in 72 scale also. The difference is again visible at the first glance. I do not recommend gluing slats at this moment because they are very fragile. I broke them four times meanwhile assembling and painting. So do not follow the steps precisely. I thought that mask each window with a liquid masking fluid is a good idea, but I should have done masking with a tape or by set with already prepared mask for this type of plane. You will see the result later. Now I'm unifying the fuselage with a primer, it's the same like on the wings a few minutes ago, in my case a few days ago. So, finally painting. I tried to paint per shading, as you can see, but I chose the wrong grey shade, and I needed to apply more layers on the surface, and thus per shading didn't have any effect in the end. Still, the paint job on the wing is very dull, thus I am painting highlights with a light grey and with a masking technique make the surface and panels optically less uniform. The whole shading and weathering on the airline models are usually quite doubtful, but who knows, maybe it will be more interesting when only one color shade over the entire model. I use for shading low pressure of 15 or 20 psi and highly diluted color, something like one part of the color and three parts of a thinner. So here is the difference for comparison. Actually it depends on what you prefer. Now I need to create a straight line for white color stripe. I use for this purpose contouring elastic masking tape, 
because you can mask with it straight line quite effortless. I told you that masking windows would be a problem. The paper ones are nicely sharp, but the masking liquid, not so much. Yes, that is horrible. Luckily, the marking which I chose has a red stripe around each window, so I only removed excess color on the windows and the rest I will cover with decals. So a little bit of cheating. It simply happens if you are making some steps for the first time. So don't worry or be sad if you will make any mistake also on your model, especially if you are a beginner. The decals are very soft and transparent, but you can unify them with surface details like rivet lines and pan lines by using decals chemicals. I used on the top of a plane white gloss color, but on the wings is matte. I must spray gloss varnish first before applying decals, because decals are painted on the transparent film, otherwise the transition will be too much pronounced. And when the work is done, I unify surface and fix decals with a two layers of a gloss varnish. I am making pan lines more browns with a grey brown oil wash. I only mix oil paint with enamel thinner. So another controversial topic is weathering on airliners. I don't want to make it look like abandoned in the plane cemetery. Actually, it will be next time. However, if you look at some pictures, you can find some exciting inspiration. However, I don't want to dispute clean planes. It is on your preferences and what you like. I think interesting is dirt on the rudder from reverse brake. You can find more pictures of weathering in the video description. The wing on the real plane was riveted, so oil and operating fluids leaks were quite often. I use for leaks also oil paints, because you can nicely blur them, and you have plenty of time to process it, even if you will decide one or two days later when you don't like the result, then you can easily wipe it off with an enamel thinner. I have my first Simpsons Boeing 737 in my parents house, so I cannot show you them side by side but this Tupolev is half time larger. So I think next time I will choose something a little bit bigger, but not too much. Maybe some cargo plane? Who knows? So that is all. It was again some unusual and exciting model. So thank you for watching and see you next time.